Hello and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. In a world where tradition meets innovation, India is making a significant impact on the global stage. Today, we explore the remarkable success story of the Make in India initiative where time-honored craftsmanship is achieving international acclaim. Join us as we uncover how Indian innovation is drawing attention and transforming local excellence into worldwide success. The Make in India initiative, launched by the Indian government a few years ago, is now showing significant results. Indian products are making notable strides in the global market, spanning sectors from bicycles and digital payments to advanced technologies like BrahMos missiles. Europe's increased focus on health and environmental sustainability has driven a surge in demand for Indian bicycles in key markets such as the United Kingdom, Germany, and the Netherlands, the world's bicycle capital. Demand is also rising in Africa. According to the Commerce Ministry data, Mozambique emerged as India's top export destination for bicycles in the financial year 2023, with exports valued at 8.84 million USD. This figure increased to 10.41 million in financial year 2024, reflecting a 17.82% growth. Industry leaders are enthusiastic about the growing global demand for Made in India products whether it is auto, whether it is mobile manufacturing, whether it is chemicals, pharmaceuticals, advanced cell chemistry. So you are seeing a lot of investment happening in these areas. If you take the mobile, which is the first one to be launched, India used to be a net importer of mobiles, mobile phones. Now we are a net exporter of mobile phones. We've got some of the last, largest factories uh, of mobile phones in the world in India. Similarly, in the electric vehicle space, right? Uh, we are seeing huge penetration of electric vehicles. We are seeing two-wheelers, three-wheelers. So we have the, uh, the electric mobility manufacturing uh, plan which has been sent. Moreover, India's services sector is making strides internationally. The Unified Payments Interface UPI system has evolved into a global phenomenon, facilitating seamless digital payments across multiple countries. This technological advancement not only highlights India's leadership in fintech innovation, but also underscores its commitment to transforming digital transactions on a global scale. What I call it principally is Make in India, taking it global. Now what we have done that is, as a company, what we have done and how I see this landscape evolving, is that every product that we create are typically industry agnostic and geography agnostic. So when I say industry agnostic means, though we are experts in the financial domain, my products can get used in commerce, in healthcare, in, in FMCG, everywhere. Likewise, it is geography agnostic. So the products that we created in India, we have taken it global to all markets with very minimal changes to comply to the regulations, local regulations, but the core product and the framework remains the same. So made in India for the world. In a major boost to India's defense exports, the country recently delivered the first batch of BrahMos supersonic cruise missiles to the Philippines. This delivery highlights India's strategic defense capabilities and its growing role in global security. India is also emphasizing the use of indigenous products and services, particularly in government procurement. The government e-marketplace platform, launched on August 9, 2016, offers nationwide sellers and service providers transparent access to government tenders, streamlining public procurement. With over 12,000 product categories and over 320 service categories, GEM has revolutionized government procurement, growing from 52 million in 2017 to over 48 billion in 2024. This platform facilitates easier business transactions and provides indigenous manufacturers and service providers with access to all government departments via a single platform. 
the gem is promoting the make in india products people like us who uh, are making in india products the medical equipment specially so uh, government e marketplace is giving a platform for those to encourage more and giving a value addition to people like us who are basic manufacturers of medical equipments the make in india initiative is transforming local excellence into global success from innovative products and technologies to international services and strategic defense exports India's growing global impact underscores its leadership and commitment to quality and innovation. India's northeast region, comprising 8 states, offers a vast untapped potential in sectors such as tourism, agriculture, and renewable energy. Recent infrastructure investments aim to unlock this potential supported by government policies promoting economic growth and connectivity and as opportunities abound for sustainable development and strategic investment in this culturally rich and geographically diverse area we take a closer look India's northeastern region bordered by Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar and China holds significant strategic importance for regional connectivity and geopolitics Comprising 8 states, the region boasts vast potential in tourism, agriculture, and renewable energy, enriched by its diverse cultures and ethnicities. Recent initiatives such as the Uttar Purva Transformative Industrialization Scheme, UNATI 2024, are pivotal for promoting industries and generating employment opportunities in the region. Investments in road connectivity, healthcare, housing and education are further driving regional development notably the confederation of indian industry cii recently organized a two day csr connect event aimed at attracting corporate investments for social and infrastructural development in northeast india this initiative facilitated partnerships between over 100 ngos 80 corporations state governments and central ministries the central government actually in the recent years has been very proactive and uh, been very uh, interested in the northeast like the act is lucis policy uh, these are already there over, over over and above the central government uh, what we tell is it is called the astalakshmi now with this objective various central government schemes are coming up specifically for the northeast recently uh there was earlier a incentive scheme for industries to come up in the uh, northeastern states recently a new scheme has come up unnati to facilitate um, infrastructure projects as well as um, uh, means uh, 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 boost the investors to come up with new investments in the uh, northeastern states and apart from the state government uh, state governments are having their own policies schemes that are coming up to attract investments in the state Significant strides have been made in the northeast including the upgrading of airports enhancing rail networks such as the Imphal Giribom line and improving national highways like the east west corridor These efforts aim to reduce travel times integrate economies seamlessly and connect remote areas within the nation power sector whereas we do have a lot of potential in the hydro itself uh, around 4000 uh, megawatt potential is there we could have tap roughly 5% of the potential we have but that requires a lot of capital investment so on that scale uh, one of the biggest uh, this thing we could have it but along with that one also we need to look after our environment since a hilly and a, you know a bad terrain over there and connectivity is always there so the investment on the connectivity and the road connectivity will only bring you know a sustainable one and also inclusive development to each and every nook and corner of the state The northeastern states of India boasts rich cultural diversity pristine landscapes and unique biodiversity making them promising destinations for travelers Assam's lush tea gardens Meghalaya's serene hills and Arunachal Pradesh's adventure opportunities cater to diverse interests Meanwhile, Sikkim, famed for its views of Kanchenjunga, 
serene lakes, monasteries, and trekking trails attracts nature enthusiasts and culture seekers alike. Uh, Sikkim is a very popular tourist area. Uh, so we get uh, more than 20 lakh tourists per year. So tourism is one of the most potential areas. Apart from this, we have food processing sector as well as animation and creative design sector. And we have a uh, lot of scope for education sector also and uh, for rural development pro uh, based projects. Today, as India aims to become a global leader, the Northeast contribution is crucial. Events like CSR Connect not only support government schemes, but also attract local and international investments, fostering infrastructural growth in the region. During the monsoon month, lakhs of Hindu devotees carry sacred water on carvers from River Ganga to offer at Shiva temples. Now the covers are designed by Muslim artists in the holy city of Haridwar, showcasing Hindu-Muslim unity. This poignant gesture enriches the Yatra's spiritual significance and highlights India's rich cultural tapestry, underscoring the power of cooperation in fostering mutual respect and harmony. <laughs> With the resonant chant of Om Namah Shivai, filling the air in temples, the auspicious month of Savan is underway with immense significance, especially for devotees of Lord Shiva. The sacred period is marked by spiritual fervor, devotion and collective celebration transcending geographical boundaries and cultural differences. One of the most striking aspects of Savan is the Kaunwar Yatra a religious journey where devotees carry ornate kaunvars filled with holy Ganga gel on their shoulders. A kaunvar is a decorated bamboo pole with pictures suspended at each end used to carry the sacred water from the river Ganga. In the heart of Haridwar, a city revered for its spiritual significance, a unique community of Muslim kaunvar makers has thrived for generations. These skilled artisans have dedicated themselves to crafting exquisite carvers that hold sacred Ganga Jal for Hindu pilgrims. We don't want Hindu and Muslim to be all brothers. No one Hindu Muslim is not in our mind. We don't want to be Hindu and Muslim to be all brothers. We Hindu and Muslim to be all brothers. बहुत से काम ऐसे हैं कि हिंदू हमारे हिंदू भाई के मुसलमानों का काम कर रहे हैं बहुत हैं इतने तो इसमें हमारे दिल में कोई ऐसी बात नहीं होती हम तो तसल्ली से अपना काम करते हैं कोई ऐसी वो नहीं काफी टाइम हो गया आता आता मैं यहाँ पे बचपन से आ रहा हूँ घर में अपने कुछ ऐसा वो नहीं यहाँ पे अभी तक कोई दिक्कत कोई परेशानी नहीं for decades, a sizable number of Muslim artisans from Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh have been an integral part of this sacred journey, meticulously crafting kaunvars carried by Shiva devotees or kaunvaryas. The involvement of Muslim artisans in kaunvar yatra preparation is a remarkable example of interfaith harmony. Despite belonging to different religious communities, these artisans and Hindu devotees share mutual respect and appreciation for each other's roles in this annual pilgrimage. The artisans' dedication to their craft and contribution to the Kamar Yatra underscores the deep-rooted tradition of communal harmony in India. और हमें बड़ी खुशी होती है हम रावण के पुतले भी बनाते हैं दशहरे पे हमें कोई वो नहीं है भाईचारे वाली बात है The Kaunwar Yatra also provides a significant economic boost to these artisans, with demand for well-crafted Kaunwars peaking in the weeks leading up to the pilgrimage, providing vital income for many families. Local markets in Haridwar and neighbouring regions bustle with activity as artisans display vibrant Kaunwars attracting buyers from across the country. This economic interdependence strengthens social bonds between Hindu and Muslim communities. Now, let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. France was conditionally picked as the host of the 2030 Winter Games on July 24 and must now deliver key financial guarantees in the coming months 
the International Olympic Committee said. The French Alps bid was the preferred choice since June, but due to elections and a current caretaker government, had been unable to deliver the necessary state and regional financial guarantees in time. France must have the guarantees signed by its Prime Minister by October 1 and have them ratified by Parliament no later than March 1, 2025, the IOC said. French President Emmanuel Macron spoke to the IOC session before the vote on Wednesday in a bid to ease any concerns and show his support for the candidacy. The constitutional problem comes after French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal and his government officially resigned last week. An uncorrected proof copy of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is slated to be auctioned off by Heritage Auctions. The book represents the first time Harry Potter was introduced to the world in print, making it a sought-after piece for avid Potter heads and collectors. The book is being sold by British business owner Dale Henry, who plans to use part of the proceeds to revitalize a nearby town whose tourism-centric economy has been hit hard by Britain's recent economic downturn. In 2021, a first edition of the same title was auctioned for a staggering $471,000. However, this uncorrected proof copy is rarer still, as only 200 were ever printed. When we talk about our craft, the first picture that comes to mind is the iconic Taj Mahal. However, this historic city is also renowned for manufacturing quality footwear. From leather shoes to sports shoes, Agra produces various types of footwear that are in high demand in international markets. So let's explore how this city is making a mark globally with its footwear industry and how the shoe industry in India is expanding. The craft of shoemaking has been a tradition in Agra since the Mughal era and much of the process is still done by hand, ensuring durability and comfort. Skilled artisans meticulously handle designing, cutting, stitching and quality checking, blending traditional craftsmanship with modern techniques. Agra's footwear industry thrives with contemporary designs exporting to various Indian states and countries worldwide. A prominent figure in this industry is Puran Davar, chairman of Davar Footwear Industries. Since 1977, his company has been manufacturing leather shoes, exporting large quantities to Russia, Australia, Canada and the USA. Export ki dekhi, ab China se bhi logo ka ho chuka hai, wo divert ho nahi ho na hai. पूरा वर्ल्ड भी जो है भारत को एक बड़ी मार्केट के रूप में देख रहा है और आगरा चूंकि इसका सबसे बड़ा क्लस्टर है आगरा की 40% जनता प्रत्यक्ष या अप्रत्यक्ष रूप से अपने जूते के व्यवसाय पर ही निर्भर निर्भर है और आगरा का ये सबसे छोटे तबके को रोजगार देता है इसलिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और मुझे लगता है ये जो अपॉर्चुनिटी मिली है Agra को अभी जैसे ग्लोबल मार्केट के रूप में जिसको जैसे देखा जा रहा है आने वाले समय में ये अपनी जो एक्सपोर्ट हम लोगों का सीधे निर्यात जो है 4000 करोड़ रुपए है ऐसे मैं आगरा की निर्यात की बात कर रहा हूं जिसमें डाबर का शेयर अभी लगभग 200 करोड़ के आसपास है उस 4000 करोड़ को हम जो भी मर्चेंट एक्सपोर्टर के माध्यम से भी जो करते हैं उसमें लगभग 5 से 5500 करोड़ आगरा से होता है ये अगले 5 साल के अंदर the demand for leather shoes remains strong, but with changing times, sport shoes have become more popular as well. In response to this, the auger based manufacturing company, Leather Luxury, has diversified its production to include casual and sport shoes, which are now being exported in large quantities. This is the country and the country that is very संख्या में हम लोग अपने जूते भेज रहे हैं तो 
2028 में जो अनुमान लगाया जा रहा है सबका पूरी इंडस्ट्री का वो लगाया जा रहा है कि कम से कम इसका डबल हो जाना चाहिए जो हम अभी कर रहे हैं उसका डबल हो जाना चाहिए और एक चीज़ और है पहले सब जूते बनते थे लेदर में क्योंकि और कोई विकल्प नहीं था लेकिन अब बहुत अच्छे अच्छे सिंथेटिक मटेरियल आ गए हैं जो लेदर से बहुत अच्छे हैं बियॉन्ड आगरा The shoe industry in India is rapidly expanding and today India is the second largest shoe producing country in the world. According to reports this industry is projected to reach 90 billion dollars by 2030 which is up from the current 26 billion dollars. Now a prime example of India's growing stature in this sector is Hajipur in Bihar where safety shoes are being manufactured for the defense forces. In Hajipur city of Bihar, the footwear manufacturing unit, Competent Exports Private Limited, is producing shoes for Russian soldiers. This achievement in the international market is a significant success for the company and strengthens India's Make in India, Make for the World campaign. Designer shoes for Europe are also being produced here. इट्स ट्रीमेंडस हम लोग हाजीपुर नहीं इन इंडिया ऑल ओवर इंडिया में हम लोग का रशिया का वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट एक्सपोर्टर रशिया में तो रशिया में जो भी है हम लोग का एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं और डे बाई डे हम लोग का जो एक्सपोर्ट क्वान्टिटी है इंक्रीज हो रहा है द रैपिडली ग्रोइंग शू इंडस्ट्री इन इंडिया इज एस्टेब्लिशिंग अ स्ट्रॉन्ग ग्लोबल प्रेजेंस एज इंडियन फुटवेयर गेम्स इंटरनेशनल रेकग्नेशन It drives economic growth through increased exports, investments in manufacturing technologies, and skill development. Indians have a deep-seated love for food, and viewing it not just as sustenance but also as a profound expression of culture and tradition. Nowhere is this more evident than in the iconic thali. which is a quintessential indian platter that embodies hospitality regional diversity and a way of life more than a meal indian cuisine is a sensory journey through centuries of tradition and flavors the aromatic blend of cumin coriander and cardamom on an indian platter tantalizes the senses and reflects the culinary diversity of the nation. The thali or Indian platter is a symphony of flavors and textures, offering everything from fragrant rice and assorted bread to a variety of curries, pickles, and sweets. It caters not only to the palate but also nourishes the soul, embodying the cultural ethos of Atithi Devo Bhava, treating guests like gods. Sasuma, an authentic Gujarati restaurant in Surat city, offers a delightful Gujarati thali brimming with flavors. This unlimited spread includes aromatic curries, regional favorites like dokla, kichdi, tepla, and a variety of sweets. Each dish on this heritage-rich platter is served in small bowls, ensuring a flavorful and authentic dining experience. Our Gujarati thali is about 24-25 items of our unlimited package. यहाँ हम दो टाइप की स्वीट्स देते हैं एक लिक्विड फॉर्म में होती है एक ड्राई फॉर्म में होती है जो सीजनल जो होता है वो सीजनल से हिसाब से हम उसको दिए जाती है एक एक ठंडी और एक गरम ठंडी में सर कभी आम की सीजन है तो आम रस होता है रबड़ी की वैरायटी होती है मठा की वैरायटी होती है सिखन की वेराइटी होती है उसके साथ कौन सा ड्राई स्वीट में कौन सा गर्म जो लाइव हलवा बनता है उसमें कौन सा उसके साथ मैच होता है वो हिसाब से सेफ सिलेक्शन होता है और तीन टाइप के फर्सान देते हैं एक फ्राई फर्सान होता है एक दही का चाट होता है वो चाट की वैरायटी होती है और एक ढोकले की वैरायटी होती है फ्रॉम बसलिंग स्ट्रीट्स टू ग्रैंड फीस्ट्स इंडियन क्विजीन ऑफर्स एंडलेस चॉइसेस एंड द साउथ इंडियन थाली फॉर इंस्टेंस इज अ हार्मोनियस ब्लेंड ऑफ फ्लेवर्स sambar soft at least crispy dosas and coconut chutney all served on a traditional banana leaf ensuring a unique dining experience
Typically served on a banana leaf, the South Indian Thali features a harmonious combination of dishes such as sambar, a tangy lentil soup, soft idlis, fluffy dosas, coconut chutney, and crispy papadums. This traditional platter showcases the region's rich culinary heritage and is enjoyed for its balanced textures and robust flavors. Each element, from the fragrant rice to the array of vegetable sides, reflects the cultural essence of South India, making the tali not just a meal, but a cultural experience cherished by food enthusiasts worldwide. I like bread. I like, mm, I like uh, par parotas with uh, uh, <coughs> raita, yes, with raita. Also, I like dosas and uh, puris. Idli is also okay, but yeah, it's uh, very plain idli. But dosa is uh, the most optimal, like, is, I think, the most optimal option. In Chennai city, Ponu Swami restaurant presents the Bahubali Thali a grand feast merging North and South Indian cuisine, featuring 54 varieties including sambar rice and paneer butter masala. This thali epitomizes India's culinary diversity and grandeur. We curated this uh, thali, Bahubali thali. Bahubali is usually associated with the grandeur, right? So this thali runs a gamut of, uh, you know, from soups to main dishes to side dish, everything. You name a uh, dish in the uh, Punasami uh, menu, you'll find it in this, right? So we thought it, should, it would be a nice uh, experience to give it to the customer. This is pre-ordered, right? This is not something that we can do off the hook because it takes uh, quite a while to prepare the entire uh, dish, right? So to put together, it takes about six people to finish the uh, dish in about 25 to 30 minutes. Indian cuisine isn't just about food. It's about preserving cultural heritage and celebrating diversity. Each thali tells a story, offering a taste of India's rich traditions and flavors, cherished by locals and admired by foreign visitors. Indian thali epitomizes culinary diversity with a balanced assortment of dishes thereby showcasing regional flavors and textures on a single platter. With that, it's a wrap on today's episode of My India, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.